communities that aren't doing very well or have suffering from higher unemployment. When I looked up the statistics from Eastern Kentucky, probably Lawrence uh, County uh, would qualify as a county that has significant. Does anybody know your unemployment figures here? I think it's over 12%. Does anybody know offhand the number? That's close. Yeah. What we're looking at is a bill called Economic Freedom Zones, and this would help communities that are distressed. Some of the distress here is probably from the President's war on coal and related effects from the coal industry not doing so well. Apparently the power plant was a big employer and the power plant suffering because of the President's war on coal. What I would say is I think there is a way that we can help from the government's point of view. So these economic freedom zones, what we would do is take any county that has unemployment greater than 12% and cut your federal taxes. We would cut your personal income tax to 5% for everybody in the whole community, 5%. We cut your corporate tax to 5%, and we cut your payroll tax. Some people are poor and they don't pay any income tax. Let's cut their payroll tax 2% per employee and 2% per employer. Do it for five years, and then gradually let it come back to normal over five years. <coughs> Ten-year stimulus. Now, how this is different than a, a traditional government stimulus, if the president were doing it, he would say, let's tax Houston, Texas, and bring it to Louisa. The problem is, is that he would then pass it out to whoever gave him a contribution in town. And I don't think that's the way it ought to work. My stimulus plan is I would just leave it with you if you earned it. Everybody would get it in proportion to getting a rebate on their taxes. It adds up. If we were to do my plan and my plan were to pass, I think for the city of Louisa, I think it was $5 million a year in tax money that you would get back. I think what your community could do with $5 million more million. Now, if you want to be for this, though, you've got to be with me when I'm talking about cutting spending, because we can't just do this or explode the debt. But we could aid communities, and there's about 20 or 30 counties in eastern Kentucky that have 12 percent or more unemployment. Harlan's got 17, 18 percent unemployment. I mean, there's a depression in some places, some of the counties in eastern Kentucky. This would work. The reason it's different than a government stimulus, though, is I'm not going to give it to somebody that gives me a contribution. You just get back some of your money that you earn. You just don't have to send as much to Washington. It's also different because when government picks who they want to give the money to, they often make the wrong choice. So for example, in this administration, they like solar panels. So they decided to give a $500 million loan to the 20th richest man in the country, George Kaiser. I personally don't think any millionaire should get any money from government. You'd be amazed and how much government money actually goes to people who make millions of dollars. Do you know that even food stamps are distributed and unemployment insurance are distributed without looking at your assets? So you could be out of work, no, un no employment, but you could have made a million dollars a year for the last 10 years. You could get food stamps and unemployment. When we've tried to pass rules to say millionaires can't get them, we've actually had trouble getting that through sometimes. Some farm subsidies go to millionaires. As well so I think we have to be careful about where we're spending the money but what I would say is that when we give it back to those who earn it the money will be better spent George Kaiser 20 richest man in the world we give him 500 million dollars to build solar panels because the president likes solar panels and hates coal he loses it all why maybe because when you're given something you don't spend it as wisely everybody in this room probably has a payment a car payment or a house payment you think about it and you work hard every month to make sure you make your payment but if I give you a million dollars, maybe you're not as concerned about it. What if I give you a billion or a trillion? It goes beyond the imagination how much money's floating around. But you don't make as wise a decision. Okay, you let me come, and I'd be happy to take a few questions. And I've been told I have five minutes. <laughs> we're, we're making the circuit today. Yes? I've still got a question. <clears throat> you didn't touch on this, but... I'm retired from the power plant. Several years ago, the administration tried to pass a law called cap and trade, which was a limit on the amount of emissions. It did not pass Congress, but the EPA now has done precisely what that did. I feel like that the EPA has overstepped their authority and responsibility as given to them by Congress. Can you comment on that? I agree with you completely. I'm opposed to cap and trade. And I also have introduced legislation called the RAINS Act that would say if the EPA does pass a new regulation that's very significant like this, it has to be voted on by Congress. 
And I think one of the problems we have in Washington is unelected bureaucrats. Do you know that we're passing 200 regulations a year that cost the economy over $100 million each? I would take all 200 of those and have Congress vote on them. And then you would have some influence. Right now, the only person making that decision is the president by himself with no congressional authority. So I think really it's one of the biggest problems we have is that the unelected bureaucracy is more powerful than the Senate yeah. and more powerful than the House. I will continue to fight this, and I think what people outside this region, the smokestack for 50 years, and if you measure sulfur dioxide, nitrous oxide, or mercury, it's gone down every decade for 40 years. Yeah. And uh, I'm not for no rules, but I am for not making the rules so onerous that we can't burn coal and we can't have coal plants. Thank you. Anybody else? Yes. How do you get rid of the pork? I know that is a <laughs> the, the Some of it's drawing attention to the most outlandish examples, like some of us pass a new regulation that's very significant like this. It has to be voted on by Congress. And I think one of the problems we have in Washington is unelected bureaucrats. Do you know that we're passing 200 regulations a year that cost the economy over $100 million each? I would take all 200 of those and have Congress vote on them. And then you would have some influence. Right now, the only person making that decision is the president by himself with no congressional authority. So I think really it's one of the biggest problems we have is that the unelected bureaucracy is more powerful than the Senate yeah. and more powerful than the House. I will continue to fight this, and I think what people outside this region comes out of the smokestack for 50 years, and if you measure sulfur dioxide, nitrous oxide, or mercury, it's gone down every decade for 40 years. Yeah. And uh, I'm not for no rules, but I am for not making the rules so onerous that we can't burn coal and we can't have coal plants. Thank you. Anybody else? Yes. How do you get rid of the pork? I know that is a, the, the, some of it's drawing attention to the most outlandish examples, like some number. So I'm for what's called the penny plan. You, everybody in government has to cut 1% of their budget. And interestingly, if you cut 1% of everybody's budget, all the way across, Social Security, Medicare, everything, 1%, you balance the budget in less than five years. And I think you can cut Social Security 1% and Medicare without cutting the benefits to people. I really think you can do it because government is so large and so unresponsive. It's like, Oh, I found a million dollars. It's been in that drawer for two years. You know, they have no idea. We have a hundred billion dollars unaccounted for in government. I'm good. If they're going to donate all these money to overseas, and they're going to put people here out of jobs and make our economy bad, if they're going to pass all this EPA, how come they don't make money back to the fire plant so they do these other things? I mean, spend yeah. the money here, it's where it's coming from. Well, and if you're really, if your goal was to control pollution, we have much better pollution controls than they do in China. In China, they shut down a whole city the other day for a smog alert where you can't even go outside because you can't breathe because they don't really have many. They're sort of like where we were in 1890 with no controls and, and pollution everywhere. And so if the coal isn't burned here, that's where the coal's going to go is to China. Then that air is coming back here someday. It might take a while to come right back. Yeah, here. I mean, China's a bigger problem than probably anybody else as far as pollution goes. So, but. Uh, no, I think the main problem, and when you get to Washington, if I have this debate with Barbara Boxer up there, she will put a picture of a, a cute little girl in a gas mask and say that I'm for killing children and that if I had my way, 35,000 children would die. <coughs> what I'm arguing it for is the existing rules, not no rules, the existing rules. What she's arguing for is elevating the existing rules to a point <coughs> where there are no power plants. And I'm... Uh, you know, not anxious for the day, but I hope someday some of these uh, mm -hmm. folks from Hollywood go to plug in their electric yeah. car, which they think is coming from clean electricity, and also there's no electricity for them, or there's no their air conditioner doesn't work in the middle of summer. So um, it, it, some of it is, is it, to me, I call it the big heart, small brain syndrome. They, they, don't, they, they want to help people, and they're concerned about the environment, but they're not using their brain to think these things through. That. If you want to know the, the countries that burn the most electricity, the top 10 countries versus the countries that burn the least amount of electricity, the bottom 10, people who burn the most electricity live 25 years longer than the bottom 10. 
because electricity is a civilizing force and allows you to get in from the cold or to get in from the heat. And is there a trade-off? Yes. Do we have to be concerned with the environment? Yes. But uh, they, they would take us back to the Stone Age. Some of these people. Maybe one more and then i got to run, I think. Do you have any comments on the Affordable Care Act? That's a short. That's a short one. <laughs> um, I think it'll be worse than you can imagine. Yeah. The main reason is is that there are two competing problems in healthcare. One is access, and one is cost. I think they are going to ultimately expand access, but they're going to increase cost. I was a doctor for in practice for 20 years. And the main complaint I heard from everybody was the cost. If people came in to me and they were in a small business, they complained about how much their insurance cost them. This didn't do anything to affect cost. In fact, it inflated your cost because you now have four choices. You used to be at hundreds of choices. You Now everything has to conform to four different choices. The, what is it? Gold, platinum, silver, bronze, those four choices. If it doesn't conform, if your insurance is less than that, if you're a 22-year-old guy and you don't want pregnancy coverage, it doesn't conform. So your insurance will no longer be deductible. No, no, not deductible. You'll get a penalty. You'll pay the individual mandate if you don't buy one of these four plans. It also works the other way. If your insurance is better than these four plans, if you're a union worker that's negotiated great insurance, or you're an executive, or you just work for a great company that has great insurance, if it's above these four plans, you're going to pay the penalty also. So in, in Florida yesterday, 300,000 people got a notice saying your insurance has been terminated. Now they have to repurchase one of these four plans. And I'm not looking forward to it. November 1st, I've got to sign up on the Obamacare changes <coughs> on that website. I'm hoping it's better in a couple weeks. But I think I'd rather have a tooth pull than <laughs> go on that website. But uh, no, I think it's, it's, it's it, I think the president uh, he is, he's well motivated. He wants to help people. There are people in our society who have horrendous health care bills and, are, and can't afford their insurance. 